Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be determining the relative density of cohesionless soil. In front of me is the apparatus that we will use in this experiment. This board on the wall above it shows the label description of some of the components of the apparatus along with some technical details such as the area of the vibrating table, the range of frequency we can use, the weights that we have and the dimensions of the modes that are here. Here fixed on the vibrating table we have the 0.1 cubic feet mold and to the side we have the 0.5 cubic feet mold. The larger mold is used for coarser grain aggregates such as uh, gravel uh, while the smaller one is used for fine grained soil like sand. The, this is the lighter weight of 25.9 kilograms and to the side we have the heavier weight of 86.2 kilograms. 25.9 will be used on the smaller mold. Moving on to the other items that we will use. This wrench is used to fasten and release the bolts holding the mold to the vibrating table. This funnel will be used to pour sand into the mold. This vernier caliper can be used to measure the dimensions of the mold so that we can calculate its volume and it can also be used to determine the settlement that takes place uh, once the sand has been compacted. Here is the surcharge base plate and this is the surcharge weight and this is a straight edge that we, we will use to strike off extra sand from the top of the mold. This is the guide sleeve of the mold. The, through this guide sleeve, the surcharge weight will pass through, and this is the sand we will use. Now, while performing this experiment, we have to ensure that the end of the funnel, this end, is not higher than one inch above the base of the mold. or when pouring the sand inside, it should not be higher than one inch above the top of the sand that has already been poured inside. Before you start filling the funnel with sand, you first have to place your finger at the bottom of the funnel to prevent the sand from falling to the floor. And you can see when the funnel is filled with sand, my finger at the bottom is preventing the sand from falling until I place it at the desired height at above the bottom of the mold. When I remove my finger, you can see the sand starts pouring inside. What we have to do is let it fall in a circular motion so that it is evenly distributed while ensuring it falls from no greater than one inch above the top of the poured sand inside. Once the mold has been filled to above its capacity, we will use the straight edge to ensure that the sand is uniformly spread at the top and then after that we will use the straight edge to strike off any extra sand from the top of the mold so that the remaining sand lies completely flat with the edges of the mold at the top. Then grabbing a brush we can uh, clean off the excess sand from the vibrating table. After this, we take the surcharge base plate and place it on top of the sand. We twist it around until we can ensure that it is properly centered over the opening of the mold. Then we will grab the guide sleeve and place it on top of the mold. This will guide the surcharge weight through it. Now once placed, we will tighten these bolts to ensure that it is properly clamped into place and make sure that it does not move while the table is vibrating. We will then place this rubber washer around the surcharge base plate and then pick up and place the guide sleeve on top and tighten the bolts. Once the guide sleeve is in place, we will pick up the 25.9 kilogram weight and slide it in through the guide sleeve. 
we must also ensure that the weight is centered over the top of the base plate to allow for uniform settlement during vibration. After this entire assembly is complete, we will move to the control panel. As you can see, the scale is 0 to 100 Hz and it is currently set to 60 Hz. So what we will do before beginning is we will open a stopwatch and then the moment we start the stopwatch, we will then turn the vibration on and we will let the table vibrate for 8 minutes. When the stopwatch reaches 8 minutes, we will turn the vibration off. So I'm going to start it right now. And now, with the machine off, we will remove the weight, unclamp the guide sleeve, and take it off. As you can see, the base plate, which at the start of the experiment was placed on top of the sand when it was level with the top of the mold, has sunk beneath the top of the mold. This is because while vibrating, the soil particles compacted and occupied less space, meaning the void ratio reduced. Because of this, the height of the sand reduced and so did the base plate's height. Now, the thickness of the sur surcharge plate is 13.82 millimeters so we will add that to the average of however much is the distance between the top of the base plate and the top of the mold for this we will use the vernier caliper when we extend the vernier caliper we can see at this point that the height difference is uh, around 11.31 uh, millimeter we will measure at two more points to take the average value of the settlement. And now here, over it is 12.33 uh, millimeters. And at this point, it is 12 millimeters. Using these three values, plus 13.82 uh, for each one, we will take the average uh, drop in height. That is the difference between the initial height of the sand and the current height of the sand. We will then unclamp the bolts that are holding the mold to the vibrating table. After releasing the mold from the vibrating table, we will lift it up and take it over to the weighing balance where we will offload the contents of the mold into the large container. The scale currently has the container set at zero weight above it. Then we will determine the weight of the sand that was in the mold. Emptying the contents of the mold, we will then weigh the sand. As you can see, the weight of the sand is 3.659 kilograms. Now you have the weight of the sand. And grabbing a scale, you will take the dimensions of the mold. The internal diameter as well as the internal height of the mold.
using this you will be able to calculate the volume and along with the weight of sand you can determine the minimum density of the sand at the start of the experiment then you can also calculate the volume after vibrating the sand by factoring in the average drop in height and using the same weight of the sand you can calculate the maximum density of the soil.